Hello everyone from sunny Goa, the city where the party never stops, time becomes second priority and people are always in a good mood. While you might have seen the crazy projects that we've already covered on this trip, I've been particularly interested in the car that I'm driving today. I'm sure you must be perplexed as to how is Bhavneet interested in a nano, but you'd be wrong in calling it a nano. Welcome to the driver's hub. This is a JM Neo. There's nothing I love more than quirky cars, a drive through some country roads and some yummy pastries. So let's grab a bite and talk about the electric nano that could but never did. That's the JM Neo. If you remember JTP from Tata, those are the same guys that made that car. And instead of doing something about performance, they tried to change the world by making a Tata Nano that is electric. Moving on with the times, as people say. Thank you. So, as you can see clearly, JM did pretty much nothing about the design. They thought it was perfect, except that the logo has now changed to Neo. And we are all very familiar with the egg-shaped design of the Nano and that rear vent that looks like it's trying to catch air, but it's super fake. It's on hubcaps and it is a very unassuming design. In fact, it is perfect in terms of dimensions for a city like Goa. And I am really hungry, so I'm going to start eating. And you guys can check out some B-roll of a very simple Tata Nano, which is kind of quirky because inside is everything different. You've got a 17.4 kilowatt hour battery and 14.4 kilowatt hour motor. So it is good for like 20 bhp and you definitely don't want to drive it only in D. You always need to keep it in S and its top speed is maybe 70 kilometers an hour. But when I tell you that this is the most fun you're going to have at your slowest, I'm not lying. I have had an absolute blast bringing it here and it is like a baby go-kart with a little bit of roll. So. In terms of dynamics, it's exactly like the Tata Nano, but it is back to the future. Mind you, this is not a one-off build. JM actually produced 300 of these cars and uh, 100 were bought by a Bangalore startup and 200 were actually bought by Ola probably to make them into cabs. But this is one of those 200 cars that were sold to Ola. The mileage in this is uh, 1381, which is 1,381 kilometers, which is very little. So this is a pretty mint example of that car. And Jayam did a pretty cool thing by retaining that rear wheel drive uh, drivetrain. So it is a pretty fun car and it will take you by surprise. And it is amazing for your city streets for you to rip it around because it is really handleable. Now this 17.4 kilowatt hour battery is good enough for you to get maybe 130 kilometers if you're being safe. And in S, you can get maybe 80, 90 kilometers as far as what I have uh, seen from what the car is. But what it does not do well at all is keep the AC cool when you're at speed. Basically, whenever you're doing 70, 80 kilometers an hour, which is basically full throttle top speed of the car, 
the AC starts to give up and the gearbox is a little notchy and it is still a work in progress. It was a work in progress back then and that's how it was sold. So it is still got a little bit of characteristics as I would say. Maybe when you're pressing the brake and you're changing gears, uh, the gear will just not engage and you need to repress the brake for you to change uh, into dri any drive mode. So that is it, but apart from that, it is exactly what you would expect from a Nano. And if this actually came on sale, I think it would do a fantastic job in our market, especially in a city like Goa, where the streets are super narrow. I think if it was on sale and this was that parallel universe, I would have kept one for myself too. Tata Nano, we are on the move in the Jayam Neo and let's get the similarities out of the way. Just like the Tata Nano, the dimensions are perfect for a closed city like Goa where the roads have a lot of blind turns and the roads get very narrow. So the dimensions of the Nano or the Neo absolutely rock in, kind, in a city like this but there are some shortcomings of it turning electric. This uh, 17 kilowatt hour battery with a 14 kilowatt hour motor does not uh, kind of keep up with the pace of traffic and this specific car has some shuddering so maybe you might be noticing it on camera as well and if I just... Uh, you can notice that this has quite a lot of uh, vibrations in them too but that's this specific car, not something that you would get in every other car. But when it comes to driving it, the accelerator pedal needs to be used like a switch on or a switch off button. Otherwise, you're going to be getting stared at or uh, just getting really bad looks from other people because you're going to be stopping them uh, from driving at a sane pace. You're going to be driving really slowly. This car like struggles to reach 60, 70 kilometers an hour and that is basically keeping your foot down to the ground. So in a place like this where the road is quite open and uh, you've got quite a lot of traffic, you get stared at. But when you are in the city or in your little hamlet uh, inside Goa, this, place, this thing is in a world of its own. It can handle fantastically it is rear wheel drive but uh, you're not gonna notice that and uh, the best thing about this thing is that when you chuck it into a corner it feels like you're going to roll it but it handles very well and it also uh, stays pretty planted considering that this is a pretty tall car and a very short one yes you do have quite a lot of torque down low now but the best thing about uh, having all of that talk down low is that in tight scenarios where you have to uh, get out quickly, yes, you can stomp on the throttle and you are out and away, but that is going to be the entire power of what this car can give you. And yes, this is a beautiful commuter, but you're watching the driver's hub, so I am going to tell you of how this thing performs. And apart from everything that I've just said, it is a fantastic car to commute. It's something that you can just drive with no worries. And in fact, if you have a scooter, it is exactly like that because it's going to be as forgiving or maybe as non-reactive as a scooter is. When you stomp on the throttle, a 125cc Activa or a 110cc Activa is going to take you from 100 to 40 uh, in maybe 150 meters, 200 meters. This does pretty much that. It's going to be uh, something that you're going to be using more for purpose rather than for enjoyment and there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, there are a lot of cities uh, just like this one, like Goa, that have very narrow streets and uh, tier 2, tier 3 cities in our country do deserve better roads but it's not that the infrastructure can be changed faster than our own vehicles and that's where this kind of methodology can put a lot a lot of people into better jobs can put uh, have people 
reach work much more comfortably and we can be a much more productive country and that was the thought behind Tata's initiative for the nano and I don't know why do people think that the nano is a shit car because it really isn't it is an absolute masterpiece for mobility and this nano has absolutely pioneered the cheap mobility pace so it only makes sense for them to revive it with the new wave of electrification what are your thoughts on the jam neo should they actually come out with it and sell it and if it actually comes out and is up for mass production would you consider it above what was the mahindra riva or the e2o thank you so much for watching i'm going to head back relax enjoy my holiday and i'll see you guys in the next one peace